Hello, viewers and subscribers. This is the Geo Scholar reporting to you. It is Sunday, June 9th, 2019. It is about 10.42 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. It's about 7.42 on the West Coast of the U.S. And one top, ooh, looks like somebody's in. Looks like somebody's in. Whoever is joining me for this stream, let me know who you are in, in the chat. Oh, Curtis, hello, hello. The topic, the topic, obviously, you see the topic in the description box is about air conditioning and migration in the United States of America. And I'm going to talk about migration patterns. Now, it is no coincidence that, you know, people migrate to different places for, for different reasons. People go places for jobs. People go places, you know, to get away from certain things. And as far as, obviously, the topic is about air conditioning. I bring up air conditioning. Right now, I'm sitting in my house here. And for those who have been following my channel, many would know that I live in the Atlanta area. And for those that don't. I live in the Atlanta area. I'm living in the southern United States of America. I've lived in other places in the United States. I've lived in I've lived in Texas. I've lived in the Seattle area for a few years. But right now I'm sitting in a room that's air conditioned. It's cool in here. I can wear this blazer without feeling like I'm blazing. But, uh, excuse me, one of the things about air conditioning, it makes it easier to live here. If anybody knows anything about the summers here, you could live without, you, you don't want to live without air conditioning while you're here. You don't. And that is just simply what it is. You don't want to. But. I want to talk about the historical migration patterns. Historically, and even today, the largest population, the, pop, the main population cores in the United States, historically have been around the Northeast United States of America, going from Washington, D.C. up to Boston, the Boswash megalopolis, which includes cities such as Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Newark, New Jersey, New York City, Boston. It includes those areas. And then you also have other places such as you got the Chicago area, which is in the United States of America, the biggest metropolitan area on the Great Lakes region and the biggest metropolitan area in the Midwestern part of the United States of America. And you look at sort of the, you look at the population cores going up towards the 1950s and you look at where a lot of people were settling and why. You take, for instance, a lot of people up to the 1950s. In the 1950s, some of the largest cities were, the largest cities in the United States included New York City, Philadelphia, no, no particular order, New York City, Philadelphia, it included Detroit, it included Chicago, it included Los Angeles, it included Detroit included you know cleveland was in the top 10 at one time you know, a lot of the biggest cities in the u.s in with the exception of los angeles and san francisco 
most of the big cities were concentrated on the east coast, the northeast coast of the United States of America, and city and cities in the Great Lakes region, like Cleveland, Detroit. You know, Detroit's not on a Great Lake, but it lies in an area very close to the Great Lakes. There are cities like Chicago, Milwaukee. You had a lot of people. The big population cores were along the Great Lakes region and along the eastern seaboard of the United States of America. And outside of that, you also had population clusters around Cincinnati, St. Louis. You had population clusters around some rivers. One of the things about the United States of America to understand is the impact air conditioning has had in terms of migration. Now, one thing to consider, the Deep South, because of its climate, it was very good for growing crops such as cotton, tobacco, some parts of the South, you could grow sugar cane, you could grow oranges down in Florida. In fact, they would keep moving further south into Florida. But you look at a lot of places in the South and in the Southwest, going from the Carolinas and Georgia, going all the way out to, Air, to Texas, going out to Arizona. Today, these are areas that a lot of people are moving to. A lot of people are moving to Phoenix. A lot of people are moving to Atlanta, moving to Houston, moving to Dallas, moving to Charlotte, North Carolina. They're moving to Nashville. But in many cases, this was not always the case. In fact, up to the 1950s, a lot of people were not moving to those areas. Now, one major exception was Florida. And the reason Florida was a major exception, you had a lot of people from northern climates that wanted to spend the winter down in Florida. And for that, you had a big land grab down there. You had a lot of people trying to spend the winter down in like Tampa, Miami. They were trying to spend the winter in those areas. And the state of Texas had some important areas as well. It had around Houston, you had the port. And then you also had San Antonio, which at one point was one of the large, today it's one of the largest cities in the United States of America. And it's always been an important part of the state of Texas in terms of like population and commerce. But places like San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, they didn't really begin, they didn't really begin to take off until like the 1960s. They didn't really begin, you know. Now, of course, when you're talking about places from like Texas to Georgia, they had other problems to deal with during the 40s and 50s, like Jim Crow. You know, you had that problem there. But, you know, that's neither here. Well, that'll be discussed and we can discuss that in another video. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to concentrate on air conditioning. Now, air conditioning was invented in the early 1900s. So air conditioning has been around a lot longer than many people would suspect. But it, had only, but it has only been since the 1950s that air conditioning in people's homes has become more commonplace. And before that, it used to be that a lot of buildings, especially in the South, didn't have air conditioning. Places in the Southwest, air conditioning was not all that common. You had to find other ways to keep cool, or you learned how to be tough and you learned how to live with it. You know, you're living in a place like Atlanta, Georgia, or Birmingham, Alabama, or you're living in Memphis, Tennessee. You're living in places where it gets really hot, really humid in the summer. I live here in the Atlanta area, and I'm not going to lie. I generally do not like summer around here. 
because of the heat and the humidity. You know, come here in autumn, it is just nice. It's wonderful. Autumn here is really nice. But if you're here in like the months of June, July, August, or even if you come here in like April, you're going to need air conditioning. And you're going to need air conditioning for a reason. You're going to need air conditioning because it's going to get to the point where it's just humid, it's miserable, and you're going to need something, you know, to keep cool while you're in a building. In fact, I remember days when I was in college and what I would do, I would go and crank the air conditioning down to like 59, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which in, in Celsius, it's about 15 degrees Celsius. But that's typically what I would do. What I would do is I would put the air conditioning down really low so that I it would be more comfortable. But one of the things about being in the south, the heat and the humidity. And then one of the places and one of the things about being in places like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico is just and Oklahoma. It's just the sheer heat. It gets really hot. I've been in the Dallas-Fort Worth area during the summer. I lived in Fort Worth for a few years. I've been to Dallas-Fort Worth area. It can get up into the 100s. It gets really hot in Texas. That is one place where you're going to need air conditioning. You are going to need air conditioning in Arizona. And the impact that Air con the impact of air conditioning becoming more and more commonplace in residential homes. This is what happened. Because the areas in what are known as the Sun Belt, those areas started growing. Those areas started becoming more and more populated over the years. Because you had, you know, you go to a place like Houston which is becoming more and more popular for NASA. You know, you had the NASA program going on in Houston, and that's why the baseball team, the Houston Astros, has their name. You know, you have the oil industry down there. You've got the aerospace industry in Texas, as well as high-tech industry. Look up Dell. Look up Texas Instruments. That's all in Texas. You got like a lot of high technology. You got a lot of industries, you know, Atlanta becoming a major destination for a lot of businesses becoming, you have some technology here. The same goes with Charlotte, North Carolina. Same goes with Raleigh. These areas start growing. More and more people start moving to the south with air conditioning becoming more common in the homes. You know, it, I'm going to check to see what's going on. Yeah, I noticed a little lag on my part, so I'm trying to make sure. Okay. But one of the things about, you know, moving further south within the U.S., more and more people are, they understand now, hey, with air conditioning becoming more common in the homes, it will become easier to live in places like Charlotte, Atlanta, San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix. One thing about Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona is a bit of a paradox when you think about it. It is the largest capital city in the United States of America, the largest state capital. Right now, it is the only state capital of 1 million or more people. It has about 1.6 million people. The state of Arizona didn't even have 1 million people in 1950. It had about 750, it had about 750,000 people in 1950. Today, Arizona has about 7.1 million. 
of which 1.6 million live in the city of Phoenix. And then you have millions of people living in the suburbs like Mesa, Tempe, Scottsdale, Surprise. And then you got a lot of people living in places like Tucson. Living, you know, you got a lot of people moving to the Valley of the Sun. You got people, you know, moving to one of the just one of the hottest places in the United States of America. People are moving there. Because you got many people who want to live in warmer climates where they don't have to deal with winter. And because of that, a lot of people, thanks to air conditioning, now on you know, it's like no year. Yeah, it's gonna be a little hot in Phoenix. We're going to move down there because we don't want to deal with winter. We don't want to deal with 50, 60 inches of snow every year. We don't have to deal with that in Phoenix. If we want snow, we can go up into the mountains of Arizona and get that. But same goes with a lot of people moving to Atlanta, moving to several cities in Texas like Austin. San Antonio, Dallas, the state of Texas itself was not all that highly populated for a while. And then more and more people started moving there. Right now, Houston is one of the largest cities in the United States of America. Well over 2 million people live in Houston. And after Houston, you have San Antonio, you have Dallas. Those cities have at least a million plus people in those cities. And then you have other large cities in Texas like El Paso, Austin, Fort Worth, cities with populations between 750,000, cities that range in between 600,000 and 900,000 people. And right now, Austin, the capital of Texas, is about to get Phoenix a run for its money in terms of being a capital city with one million plus people. Austin may very well reach it by the end, by the coming census, by 2020. But you think about air conditioning and how it's played a very important role in migration. People who would otherwise not move to the South because of the heat and humidity, many have moved there. Many people who would have desired to live in warmer climates are doing so. At one time, and I think about this, California, before air conditioning started becoming more commonplace in the home, the top place that a lot of people when a lot of people wanted to move away from colder climates, the top one of the top places you'd go to is California. Because California has a climate where, yeah, it gets a little, it would get warm, but not all the way hot. It depends on what part of California you're in. You're in the Central Valley, it's going to get really hot in the summer. You get into certain valleys in California, and you get into certain valleys. In the greater LA area, you get out towards the desert, it gets really hot. But if you're towards like the coast, if you're towards like Santa Monica, if you're towards like, you know, you got that breeze, you know, you got you got that breeze, you got that relatively dry heat. And so it's not nearly as hot as say going to Phoenix. It's not nearly as humid as say in going to Charlotte or Atlanta. But as air conditioning became more and more commonplace in the homes, more and more people started to move further south in the U.S. Air conditioning was a big change, was one of the big changers, one of the big innovations of technology that would eventually help more people move to warmer climates. And the human being, human being is like nothing else in nature. Because the human being would figure out ways to live in climates that generally would not be conducive to certain amounts of development. 
and yet it happens. You think about, you know, at one time you had a lot of development. You think about all the industry that started moving to places like Atlanta, that started moving to Charlotte, that started moving to Fort Worth, Texas, that started moving to Arizona. You think about all of that. You think about the fact that many places, it's not very comfortable to be there during the summer. And then you think about places where it's not very comfortable to be there in the winter. People figure out ways to adapt to their climate, to their surroundings. People figure it out. And in many ways, technological adaptations can influence migration patterns. You know, air conditioning is being invented. More people start to migrate to places like Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Charlotte, Raleigh. More people start migrating to Florida. More people, and, and not just as winter residents. Many people start migrating to Florida for good. Many people start moving to Arizona, not as winter migrants, but to stay and to stay for good. People start moving, you know, you think about Las Vegas. Las Vegas became one of the fastest growing cities in America during the late 20th century into the 21st century. And you think about the impact air conditioning plays on that because Vegas, be in Vegas during the summer and see how important air conditioning is. You will understand the impact in which air conditioning has on migration patterns and how important that is. You know, how technological innovations can be very important, you know, in terms of migration and how migration being a, an important part of geography can be influenced by many factors, being influenced by technological innovation. One moment, got a question here. Do you think the implication of air conditioning or other technology on migration will outweigh the challenges of being in the South through to climate change? Oh, good question, Curtis. Well, it really depends on where you are. I'm here in the Atlanta area, and one of the things about climate change, there's a lot of there's a lot that needs to be studied. One of the implications about climate change is that the one of the things is like sea level one of the things that is being looked at is the scenario that of sea levels rising. It depends on where you are. If you are in Florida or if you are in a coastal city and sea levels start rising, that will not be a good thing. If you are in Atlanta or Charlotte or Nashville, it will be a little different. But even there, there could still be some disadvantages. I think the biggest factors is that it depends on where you are. Air conditioning could, the good of the implications of air conditioning could outweigh the challenges of living in the South due to climate change, depending on where you are. If you are further inland, it could help. If you live on the coast and the sea levels start rising, it probably will not help at all. It won't help at all. And in that case, it really doesn't matter if you have air conditioning or not. Because with the rise in sea levels, it won't just be coastal areas in the south that have problems. It'll be coastal areas like New York, Massachusetts, you know, place, you know, and 